Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This. This is the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Malaysia's COVID-19 SOPs are still largely based on surface disinfection and experts say that there simply hasn't been enough focus on monitoring indoor air quality as well as the lack of investment in improving ventilation of shared closed space and closed spaces. Now, have there been clear SOPs and resources made available to help ensure good ventilation, especially in spaces that are continuously occupied or where masks are removed when eating, for instance? Joining us on the show tonight is Associate Professor Dr. Mohamed Sharul Mohamed Nazir. He's a senior lecturer at the Department of Earth Science and Environment at University of Bangsa, Malaysia. Sharul, welcome to the show. It's good of you to join us tonight. Um, I'd like to begin our conversation look, taking a look at this study that you led, um, the findings of which were published earlier this year in the um, international scientific journal Nature um, and the study was about the airborne transmissibility of SARS-CoV-2. Now I'm just wondering what did you learn from that study Cheryl that perhaps we need to take note of especially when we're thinking about reducing airborne transmission indoors particularly in settings like the office or offices or restaurants. All right. Um, hi Melissa. Uh, hi Siraj. Um, thank you so much, Awani, for inviting me on behalf of UKM. Thank you so much. Okay, um, uh, thank you so much for the question. Okay, uh, basically, um, uh, last year, since uh, April to June 2020, uh, UKM, uh, Utah, and UM uh, has conducted um, quite an uh, impressive uh, study focusing on uh, indoor hospital ward in a hospital, a teaching hospital uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, basically, we came from various uh, backgrounds like myself. I'm uh, personally uh, uh, indoor air quality background. We have virologies, we have a uh, 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 DOSH, OSH uh, background and medical background. So with this combination, we, we conducted uh, airborne transmission study uh, in the hospital ward, uh, which involved a uh, COVID patient. As you remember last year, uh, where there are many various types of clusters that have been uh, occupied uh, uh, in the uh, Clown Valley Hospital, uh, especially in our hospital that we conducted the research, we found that uh, the, the um, sh quite shocking uh, uh, back in last year compared to this year, since WHO has uh, uh, stated uh, the airborne transmission is actually uh, 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 involved uh, uh, water droplets that can be uh, transmit uh, uh, one meter uh, apart. Uh, for your information, uh, in the indoor in indoor environment, uh, there are two uh, transmission, uh, so uh, uh, including human to uh, uh, surface to human and human to human. And uh, basically, um, from our research that we found uh, ultra fine particles uh, such as PM two point five um, can um, um, you know, uh, be a potential carrier of the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, in, in the ambient air. Um, like, uh, when we found that uh, the ultrafine particles such as PM2.5, so PM2.5 can penetrate deep into our lungs compared, compared to PM10. So, uh, that's why um, uh, recently, uh, back in a few months ago, where the WHO stated that it can be travelled far, far more than two meters away. I think this is uh, that we found last year where uh, these ultra particles can be a, a potential carrier of the SARS-CoV-2. For example, if the occupants uh, patient in the hospital coughing or singing or, or you know, talking, so the virus uh, uh, can be spread out from the mouth and can be accumulated with, uh, with this aerosol or ultra fine particles. So that's why if you, uh, uh, if you realize Back in uh, recently, uh, uh, there are many more clusters that involve with indoor environments such as offices, uh, you know, and 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 uh, indoor space uh, uh, spaces. So I think this is why okay. um, the, the spreading mm -hmm. can be more. 
Yeah. Okay, Cheryl, it's very it's a fascinating study, but I wonder if uh, there's something special about a hospital, specific to hospitals, meaning that the viral load, I mean, just because people with uh, the disease and perhaps severe disease and therefore coughing and, you know, and expelling the, the, the virus would be much more than you have in other settings or potentially in other settings. Does the, does the hospital setting uh, mean that this study can't really be applied to other settings? So, uh, yeah, actually, uh, it does can be uh, uh, fit to uh, various uh, indoor environment types uh, because uh, we found, uh, for example, if the aerosol can be trans uh, tra travel uh, further, so that means uh, in, in indoor or like office setting, it also can be the same thing because, you know, uh, you know people talking and people, uh, you know, do these activities and then there's a, a, a dust uh, in our uh, ambient air, uh, especially the PM2.5. So I think um, uh, this actually, uh, our study that can be implemented to uh, this uh, various of, uh, type of indoor. So that's why uh, we must uh, emphasize the basics of uh, 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 SOPs such as like, you know, uh, 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 mask, uh, wearing masks and, uh, you know, um, uh, social distance. That is the basic things that uh, people need, need to be followed because from our study, that proof that it can travel far. So it can be travelled far in the in the in the ventilation system. So I think there are uh, many factors that can uh, uh, trigger this uh, spreading uh, of the virus in the indoor space. Siraj. Okay. All right. So so now that we know that uh, airborne transmissibility is the dominant way uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, spreads, um, I believe in was it uh, in March or uh, so when WHO released their roadmap for better ventilation. But it was only in July that our government, that the Ministry of Human Resources, released a guidance note on ventilation and indoor air quality for non-residential settings. I'm wondering, um, Cheryl, if you think that that guidance note that was released, whether that goes far enough, whether it's comprehensive enough to provide um, guidance for businesses and uh, offices and restaurants to, to, uh, to continue to open up, to, to live with um, COVID in, during this pandemic? Yeah, um, uh, basically, yes, it, it, uh, it does. Uh, even though um, like international, like uh, US, UK, Europe, so they have uh, implemented a, a guideline, uh, you know, quite uh, um, previously than us. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, DOSH, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, and other related agencies, I think uh, have done a great job uh, because the guideline is very important for the employer, the employee, and and everyone to use, especially for those that who want to, uh, you know, continue their business, you know, uh, to open their office. So I think this guideline. Uh, need to be uh, read out. But uh, the most important is how can we understand the guideline. Uh, it, it may sometimes uh, it be technical to other other people. So I think um, f from my understanding, and I also, part, uh, me and my team also part of the, the uh, guideline preparation uh, uh, with the Academy Science Malaysia and, and, and many agencies. So I think um, the, the, the word is, is uh, 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 under, uh, understandable. I think uh, it should be very helpful for the future, especially when we talk about gym, for example. I think uh, it's very important uh, for this kind of setting need to uh, uh, focus or emphasize the guideline by the DOSH. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. That was Mohamed Shara Mohamed Nazir of UKM. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll come back to this topic in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned to consider this. dan semangat menjadi kesinambungan perpaduan tanah air yang tercinta 
berteraskan adab yang terpahat di jiwa dan raga. Marilah bersama kita membina negara Malaysia. Untuk memastikan Malaysia ada ke depan dan maju. Induknya adalah Melayu Malik itu kepada sesuatu yang berpengaruh. Kalau itu yang dia nak ki. Hi, you're watching Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me is Sharad Kutin. If you've just joined us on the show, we're discussing the need for a greater focus on ventilation and indoor air quality as we return to work, to school and to play. Joining us on the show tonight is Lilian Tay. She's the Design Director at Veritas Architects. She's also the immediate past president of the Malaysian Institute of Architects, which is the professional body for architects in the country. Lillian, good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I'd like to make reference to the Department of Occupational Health and Safety's uh, guidance notes on ventilation and indoor uh, air quality for non-residential settings. I'm just wondering if you were to take a look at that guidance note and um, in terms of the practical um, issues when it comes to improving indoor air quality, what challenges do you uh, see or have you observed when it comes to ensuring proper or better ventilation for Malaysia's existing buildings? Um, well, uh, I think the first of the note, uh, the guidance note from the North, quite nicely, I think we about next to embark on the whole uh, phase two, phase three, because people are starting to get back to work in the office. Um, and, and the notes, they are guide, guidance notes, they are guidelines, and I do find them fairly comprehensive. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, propo uh, suggestions. Uh, it, it, it's not, uh, I mean, it, it's not a story. It, 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 it people free to assess what they can adopt what is practical in the specific business, the specific premises. So in that way, I feel it is a, a, a good and a workable a document that will be a good reference. Lillian, are, are there gaps in, uh, you know, in the guidelines in terms of how buildings operate? Because I know as an, as an architect, you're not just thinking of the um, you know, those rooms and, and those uh, situations that people might be quite static, you know, sitting at a desk and so on. But there are also issues of corridors, of lifts, which are very confined spaces and take uh, a huge number of people, you know, o over the period of an uh, office uh, a day and so on and so forth. Uh, does, do the guidelines cover all these areas? Well, um, I think it, it does mention, like, um, you know, besides the mechanical means, um, you know, of, of uh, up upgrading the filtration systems and and improving the air change um, and to, you know, in, in increase the amount of uh, fresh air content, uh, in and close the workspace areas. Uh, it does mention that a good, uh, that you do need to also uh, have multiple strategies. You also need to um, teach and train and incentivize and um, people in the world to to respond accordingly. For instance, I think there is a lot of wisdom in one of the guys that encourage um, officers, for instance, to flush up at the end of the day, the, in the mornings and or Lillian? Lillian, I think uh, the audio is breaking up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and come back and see whether we can uh, get you on the line and perhaps maybe improve a little bit uh, on the audio. We'll be right back on Consider This. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Di tangan kita 
adat, budaya dan semangat menjadi kesinambungan perpaduan tanah air yang tercinta. Berteraskan adab yang terpahat di jiwa dan raga. Marilah bersama kita membina negara Malaysia. Untuk memastikan Malaysia ada ke depan kita boleh maju. Induknya adalah Melayu itu untuk orang yang membuat polisi. Kalau itu yang mereka nak ki, fine. Mungkin kita berbeza pandangan. Tapi kita mempunyai kuasa yang boleh menentukan budaya di masa hadapan. Polisi yang mesra wanita, sudah tentu dia akan datang daripada pemimpin wanita. Bila sentuh soal berita, tiada masa untuk tunggu. Kepada anda kami bawakan fakta, susulan dan kupasan yang terkini. Tiada drama dan tiada pengulangan. Usah tunggu lama-lama. Awani 745 lebih awal dari biasa. Amanah di tangan kita Adat, budaya dan semangat Menjadi kesinambungan perpaduan tanah air yang tercinta Berteraskan adab yang terpahat di jiwa dan raga Marilah bersama kita membina negara Malaysia Untuk memastikan Malaysia ada ke depan, kita boleh maju. Induknya adalah Melayu Malik itu untuk sosial. Yang... Hello, we are back on Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sherrod Kutin, and we've got Lillian Tay back on the line. She's the design director at Veritas Architects. Lillian, coming back to something you said just before the break about how um, we need to be looking to incentivize the adoption of the, the guidance note issued by DOSH. Um, I'm just wondering about compliance. So this is just a guidance note. It's not quite uh, an SOP where everyone has to adopt and there are um, measure or there are fines or, or uh, you know repercussions if you don't follow. What uh, do you think can be done to make sure that buildings, um, existing buildings, are uh, COVID-19 compliant, making sure that ventilation is improved? Well, um, I think the guidelines does uh, set out all the uh, various um, solutions and recommendations and. Um, and I, I think it is good that it's not too prescriptive in the sense that, you know, many businesses, premises, they have their specific requirements, their specific modus operandi. And it's good that they have the flexibility uh, to, you know, to follow the principles of what's set out in the guidelines and, and implement it according to their premises. So I, I think it's, it's, um, it's important. I think uh, companies, they appoint, like, for instance, like a, a leader, uh, who who will be the the cheerleader for you know uh, ensuring SOPs uh, are met as we go through the whole recovery process before we hopefully go back to normal one day. So speaking um, of going and, back and to and normal, bit, Lillian. Yeah. Sorry, Lillian. You know, speaking of going back to normal, do you think our love affair with air conditioning has to end? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, uh, I think the love affair has has to. I mean, we, I think it's it's good to start uh, looking back at the wisdom of uh, you know um, old buildings uh, that we had in the 50s and 60s before the days of air conditioning. I think designers too and architects too have to rethink um, whether we should really be always um, assuming that you that the best place is a, a totally uh, hermetic closed 
control space. Uh, for the office space, of course, it's uh, a little bit more difficult, but I think there's still a necessity to allow the space to, to breathe more. For instance, I, I think there is, uh, it would be quite good to have balconies that can be open, not, not all the time, but periodically through the office day, through at lunchtime, for instance, that can allow fresh air to ventilate. Because if we were to really adopt these uh, 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 ideal uh, fresh air um, content of, of air conditioning, I, I think uh, it will be imposed quite a big cost, really, uh, to right. replace the whole system to be able to achieve that. You know, it's, I think the WHO recommended uh, fresh air quality is about four times what is the normal design quality. So I can't imagine that, uh, you know, that that would be a solution in the immediate future. Right. I think that uh, probably there's wisdom to just go back and, and maintain and clean out the system so that it works more efficiently. I think we tend to have a very poor maintenance culture and 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 systems will deteriorate over time and so therefore the performance is low. So I, I think the simple thing of just going back uh, cleaning it, maintaining it, and getting it back to close to its design, um, you know, uh, performance level would already be a big step. And then after that is to maintain a constant maintenance regime so that it, it doesn't drop, the performance doesn't drop, and then introduce ways to to bring in fresh air, you know, in, in a, a practical manner, if I may say, you know, mm -hmm. even in the workplace. All right. Just, Lillian, can I ask you, I mean, Malaysia doesn't just have a love affair with air conditioning, but particularly in urban areas, we have a love affair with high-rise buildings. And I'm just wondering how practical open windows are, balconies are for buildings that are high-rise, particularly you see in the city centre offices, office spaces are predominantly in buildings that are very, very tall. Um, are you seeing perhaps more implementation of COVID um, ventilation guidelines in those types of buildings and perhaps also in the newer design of, of new buildings? Are, are they taking into account all of that, the spread of how the, the spread of COVID-19 happens? Well, you know, I'm a big believer in the big city and, uh, and I don't believe that uh, this incident should let us um, you know, stop believing that the city is is a great center of you know creativity for business, um, and and um, and these uh, the the um, making high rise buildings uh, more um, livable, uh, you know, during times of of uh, contagious infections. I think is something that we can solve. It, it's I would really hate to see, uh, and uh, and I hope this wouldn't happen. That there will be a flight to the suburbs, which is also not a very green thing, you know. As we clear more uh, green areas uh, in in the hinterland, so I do believe that um, uh, there are a lot of things we can do. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think even in the office environment, as you can see, many of our buildings did have like sky gardens that people can go out, that the doors can open to to encourage more fresh air to come into the office space. And, and some of these can be easily made um, safe and even rainproof. You know, we've, we've done, for instance, um, sky gardens that have a, a, a permeable glass wall. So you can see out the plants get sunlight and, and you get the sense of outdoors, but you also protect it from the rain. It can be used throughout the whole day, even in the monsoon season. And, and all these are quite doable by very simple um, design measures. So I, right. I don't think that... Um, I think we need to open up our offices uh, a bit more because it's not, you know, it's not all the time you have to be in an air-conditioned room. You could also come up to the terrace to have discussion, you know, to go through and rework some uh, papers, whatever you're doing. So um, this notion of thinking that office space is totally enclosed, I think that is what needs to change and that we can still, mm -hmm. even at 30, 40 storey, be able to work in a semi-outdoor situation. And that, that will be a nice relief in such times should it recur. And I think it will recur in the future. I completely agree. Thank you so much, Lillian, for being on the show tonight. Lillian Tay of Veritas Architects there. Joining us now, we have Associate Professor Dr. Bernard So. He's the Chair of the Centre for Sustainable Mobility Technologies at the Faculty of Engineering and Science at uh, University Tunku Abdul Rahman. Good evening, Bernard. I understand that you are one of the contributors to the uh, Ministry of Health's Guidelines of Ventilation in Healthcare Settings, that is to reduce the transmission of respiratory pathogens. I'm just wondering what your takeaways were working on that and what we can uh, use as in non-residential settings, what we can adopt from that. Okay, yeah, good evening everyone. So uh, we come out this guideline 
you can see that uh, actually we need to put the COVID patient in the negative pressure one. That is the most important thing. So you can see that uh, when this COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, so Malaysia is slightly less prepared for that. So we have a very less this negative pressure one. So after one year, we will see that even for private hospital, they are, they are setting up this static pressure one. Then we try to work on the ventilation side to reduce the transmission or the outbreak inside the hospital. Yeah. So they are provide a uh, certain yeah. guideline on that. So like the ventilation rate. So uh, there will be for static pressure one, there will be 12 ACH. Then for normal, there will be 6 ACH at least. Right, for that. Then again, you are also uh, telling them how to improve the ventilation in the hospital. So, uh, the where's the airflow direction? We are talking about uh, this ventilation. There are three important things. So, what's the ventilation rate? Another is the airflow direction. Another is the airflow distribution. So, airflow direction should be from clean to less clean. So, means in other ways, means that uh, the airflow should come. The, the air to flow from doctor to the patient, uh, something like this. Then we also providing the mitigation strategy. So let's say uh, you, you need to have this uh, portable HEPA, uh, HEPA air cleaner that uh, you can actually reduce or filter out the virus particle in the what, uh, where to put it and how to use it. So in the guideline, we uh, recommend two mitigation strategy which uh, in line with the C CDC guideline. So which is the uh, portable HEPA air cleaner and other is a UVGI. Yeah. Bernard, there, there have been a lot of, uh, it seems like, you know, people are very entrepreneurial and uh, companies are selling all kinds of cures and, and gadgets to deal with COVID-19. Not all of them necessarily very scientific. I mean, what would you... Uh, advise the public, you know, because they see these advertisements uh, on all kinds of online sites about, you know, cleaning the air and so on. What would you uh, rec uh, remind them of when trying to make decisions about these kinds of gadgets? I see. Okay. So normally our advice like this. So when we talk about this air cleaner technology, so there are two things we need to see. One is the product. Another is the whether you have any byproduct of it. And these two should not bring any uh, should not bring any harmful effect to our human. So uh, as we see from the CC guideline, and as well as you can see for DOSHA for the residential guideline, so they are actually advising that people are not using the ozone, the ozone uh, generation device. Uh, they should be turned off. That yeah, this one of them. So the other thing. So according to this. Um, US uh, EPA, then or the FDA, they have the guideline for this air cleaning technology. So if the device gener generating the this ozone, there should be less than certain amount, should be less than 50 ppb. So uh, they should put out what are the what are the efficiency for curing the right. virus. So like uh ninety something percent. So actually you can see that um, in the this FDA, uh, they are required this acne technology to perform up to log four of the efficiency in okay. carrying the Bernard, virus. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Unfortunately, we've run out of time and that wraps up this episode of Consider This. That was Bernard Saw of University Tunku Abdul Rahman. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Shavad Kutun signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. <laughs>